So you know getting into dental school is is a process and there could be some challenges. Sh share with us what has been the hardest part for you to do and achieve and get through during this process of applying to dental school. You know, I will honestly say one of the hardest parts about getting into dental school is definitely being disciplined and consistent over the course of four years, five years, however long your duration is. Um, you know, we all have to take some crazy prerequisites and we all have some different majors, whatever it may be. And I think remaining consistent and keeping our eye on the end goal while also enjoying the journey, of course, because the journey is what you're going to remember more so than the beginning and the end. So enjoying, enjoying the journey, making sure that I'm keeping my eye focused on the end goal and being disciplined day in and day out was definitely a challenge. Um, in regards to my like application, though, I would say cultivating a thorough and complete application was definitely a challenge. I think that the way you elucidate the stories and the information that you have in your application will definitely enhance your application. And it took me about two to three months to prepare all of those activities, my personal statement, um, every aspect of the education, I mean, of the application, um, combing through it and making sure that it's thorough and complete was definitely a challenge. But I do believe if you're able to start early and um, get it done as soon as you can and, you know, just do a little bit every day, you'll be able to, 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 to knock it down and it won't be as bad. For me, it definitely was a challenge, though, because I had a, some hardships last spring when I was uh, planning on applying to dental school and, you know, balancing um, my recovery with applying to dental school and studying for the dad was definitely a challenge. So time management, for sure, staying disciplined and remaining focused. Gotcha. Gotcha. Dental school, dental school, dental school. Those three letters of DDS or DMD is the prize that many people are challenged with and they are pursuing it. Stay tuned as we talk to a senior college student who just got into not only one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but eight. I can't even count that, but I have nothing. Eight. <laughs> dental schools eight dental schools and he's going to tell you how he did it how he did it stay tuned hey this is dr darwin a new dentist coach with another episode of ask dr darwin on the new dentist podcast show where we talk about getting into dental school which is our topic for today we're also talking about getting into residency and life as a new dentist guys be sure you are continuing to share to to comment uh and to support this channel we bring you this content because it's important and it's valuable and it's helpful uh, but it takes a lot of time takes a lot of resources so there's ways that you can support the channel in addition to liking and commenting and also uh, uh making sure that you can support the channel via many different ways we got some merchant here down below you can check out and also uh you can also join the ch channel and subscribe to the channel as well also this episode of ask dr darwin is being brought to you by dr darwin on demand right here dr darwin on demand the ultimate resource to help you and it's a community that helps you get into dental school, get into residency, helping you get your application uh, and everything prepared. A group of like-minded individuals, we share testimonies, we share successes, we share failures, all to help you move forward, move the needle forward. For more details, go down below, right down here and click that, uh, click that webpage, okay? Today, special guest, coming straight from the DMV, my second home. And for those of you that know what don't know what DMV is, it stands for DC, Maryland, and Virginia. That that right. area that's that's uh down there in DC and Maryland. Uh straight from the DMV, got a special guest guest, uh future student doctor Malachi Wright. How you doing, man? 
I'm doing well. How are you? How are you? It's great to be here. Not, not as good as you. Not as good <laughs> as you with these with these eight dental school acceptances. You know, some most of us have been happy with one. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you uh you probably when you sleep, man, when you sleep, you probably smiling just <laughs> in, in excitement of uh of uh of this uh this journey. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So for those of us uh, that may not know you or meeting you for the first time, please just share a little bit about, uh, introduce yourself and share a little bit about where you're from and all those great details. All right, perfect. Um, just want to start off by saying I'm truly elated to be on here. Uh, I watched your podcast so much when I was in high school, going through college, and it's just phenomenal to actually be sitting on this show talking to you. So thank you for having me on. Um, of course, my name is Malachi Wright. I'm a recent graduate of Towson University. Uh, where I graduated with summa cum laude Latin honors, and I was able to actually be the commencement speaker there. So let's go, Tiger. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a native of pre- PG County. I went to Bowie High School. Um, of course, that's in the DMV, Maryland. Um, I'm from College Park, Maryland. So it's about five minutes from uh, UMD's campus. Um, currently in the process of being a, or not in the process, I am currently a, a teacher uh, at Dundalk Middle School uh, over here in Baltimore. Um, I'm also in business with my brother. Uh, it's a little bit of a competition, but not so much. Uh, he's currently in the process of applying to law schools. Uh, we're twins, actually. So, oh, you you're a twin. Sort of, yeah. Uh-oh. And we look exactly alike. So if you saw him, <laughs> you wouldn't have been able to tell that it was not me. What's What's his first name? Rasul. Rasul. Okay. Yes, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> But yeah, um, right now I'm just in the interim, getting ready for dental school, um, striving to get back to com- my community any way possible, and just enjoying my free time off. Yeah, that's great, man. Well, yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy it right <laughs> now. Uh, get a lot of sleep. I know you, like I said, you probably been smiling in your sleep with all these acceptances, <laughs> uh, but those those smiles, unfortunately, may change a little bit <laughs> once dental school starts. <laughs> Uh, but you'll be fine. You'll be fine. So let's talk about why why dentistry. You know, you mentioned you have a twin who's uh, uh, interested in law, and mm-hmm. it's very possible that you you may have had some other interests as well. Why did you pick dentistry as the career uh, of choice? Well, it, that's a really interesting question because when I answer it, I answer it the same way but differently every single time someone asks me. And this time, I'm going to answer it in kind of a different fashion. Growing up, my mom um, and I, we used to always cook a lot. So I I thought I wanted to be a chef. And I tell you this much, there is no reason why I should not have been on like Chef Master Junior or something like that. Like that was me. I should have been on a show like that. But I always knew that I had a heart for serving the community. Um, My father is a pastor here in Washington, D.C. And we've always grown up in Southeast Washington, D.C., giving back to that community. And it was a particular instance where a member of the church choir, he was singing one day and, you know, me being my father's son, I told my dad, I said, hey, dad, this guy's teeth look crazy, like his mouth looks crazy. And, you know, me being about 12 or 13 years old, you know, I didn't know exactly what steps to take. And my dad is a high school teacher, um, Montgomery County, and he was like, you know, I'm going to get him the help that he needs. So he pulled a couple of strings and turns out um, the individual had autism and he was suffering from an extreme case of gingivitis, um, which resulted in him having to have all of his teeth extracted. And he later on got a pair of dentures. And I tell you this much, when he came to church a couple of months later, he was so elated. He had a, the biggest smile on his face, approaching people with such confidence that I've never seen um, throughout my years of service. So I knew in that moment that Dennis had the uh, had the ability to serve and the propensity to serve as a bridge where we connect oral health care, education, and improve self-esteem. So from that point, I said, you know, let me figure out, let me see what this dental thing is about. And I was able to shadow a wonderful doctor here at Bowie. Um, his name is Dr. J.L. Dean Brutus. And ever since that, that first day I shadowed, I said, yeah, this is definitely something that I'm interested in. So knowing that, I went full guns a blazing. Of course, I've explored other career options, but none of them were as appealing as uh, dentistry. Yeah. And, you know, I will end answering this question by saying 
my brother and I, man, if you were to see us like on a regular day, I would probably be jacking up a car, fixing some brakes or something like that. So the ability to work with my hands was definitely also a reason that contributed to my reason why for dentistry. Yeah. And, and it sounds like even as a 12 year old, the impact that you visualized and saw on how something as simple as someone's smile really transformed their behavior. Uh, that's impactful, you know? Extremely. That's impactful. Well, also impactful is going through this process. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, once you've made that decision and, you know, you start the application process, share with us a little bit about your timeline after you knew probably sometime in high school and then, of course, going into college, that you were going to be pretty much a pre-dental student mm. uh, uh, that would eventually be applying to dental school during your junior or senior year of college. So talk, talk a little bit about your application process. Uh, well, I will honestly start off by saying my application process, and even though I knew I wanted to be a dentist when I was in like my junior or senior year of high school, I was very non-traditional in certain aspects of the work. I knew I wanted to be a dentist, but I didn't know what it took to become a, or to get into dental school. Um, I started off uh, kind of lugubriously as I was at my community college. Um, I graduated from high school with a pretty decent GPA and I was playing sports. So I got a couple of scholarships playing sports, but I come from an extremely large family. Uh, I have six other siblings, uh, two parents. So it's a family of nine. And I knew that money was definitely something I had to consider when, you know, aspiring to be something like a dentist. So I started off at community college and at my community college, I really learned the foundation of what studying and basically like digging through the dirt really was. And I realized that in order for me to get to the state that I'm in today, I had to remain disciplined and, you know, believe in myself more so than anyone else would believe in me. So, you know, there were many, many, many times on this journey where I thought I was going to quit. Um, I was on the verge of failing. Why well, I'm not. I wasn't on the verge. I had like an E in my pre-calc class, my first semester of community. Not an E. Not an e. e. Yeah, it was bad. It was so bad. And I said, you know what? I haven't taken any biology classes yet. I said, I'm going to need to drop this class. And I don't, even, I don't think I could be a doctor. I can't even pass this pre-calc class. And, you know, it wasn't until one night I walked in the kitchen and it's funny because that's like right after I watched one of your videos on YouTube and, you know, I saw my dad in the kitchen washing the dishes and I really reminisced on how much my parents have sacrificed for me to get to this point in my life. And I said, you know what, all those ancestors who came before me and all the lineage of sharecroppers and this, me being a descendant of the slaves who came before me, who sacrificed so much time and who necessarily didn't have a choice to do what they wanted to do. I wasn't going to give up on myself for them. So, you know, after that, I buckled down, registered for the class again. And ever since that moment, I've never gotten anything lower than an A, any class I've taken. And I think realizing mentally the capabilities we have and succeeding when we really want something by any means, while also understanding that we need to enjoy the process because it's the process that we're going to be talking about for the rest of our lives and the yep. process and our experiences that we're going to be giving the people coming up. Right. Um, it was something that I kept with me. So throughout that time, I moved my way up scholarship after scholarship and found my way at Towson, had a wonderful experience here. And then right before I started to apply to dental school, I went in for a routine uh, inguinal hernia surgery. And, you know, man, I'm really interested in medicine. So I was in there. I was asking the doctors all these questions. We're, you know, going back and forth for how I'm going to be applying to Columbia and stuff. And then I wake up and I cannot feel or move my right leg or both of my arms. And it was one of the scariest moments in my life because not only was I in the middle of my semester, but I was also hadn't taken the DAT yet and was really crunched on time for submitting my application. So, you know, in that moment, I, I, I realized that I was being tested. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I told myself, I said, you know, I could either take the scapegoat that everyone's giving me and just say, you know what, I'm going to push all this stuff to the summer, retake my classes, then stay an extra semester, whatever it is. 
uh, because I was I was messed up, man. I had to learn how to stand again, walk again, move again. And I'm an avid gym person. Uh, yeah. So in that moment, I realized that I had to get back on track. Baby steps, of course. Um, and, you know, I found my way to getting eating substances. So it's definitely that's, possible. That's 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 amazing, man. And and I'm and I'm sure some of that story and you, you probably shared in your application because from what I hear, that's perseverance, grit, and determination. Yes, sir. You know, uh, it's it's funny because you would think that I shared a lot of it, but I think I only like in my personal statement, I only wrote like one sentence about it because, you know, though it was a part of my story, I really didn't want it to overshadow all the stuff that I was doing before because, yeah. you know, it was yeah. definitely a big aspect. And then what you said, it was 100% correct. That grit, that determination is what I, um, what my interviewers elucidated that they yeah. saw me, you know, throughout that experience and many others. Yeah. Yeah. So once you were able to kind of resume and get back on focusing on your application, what what was your timeline? Like, when did you start putting your your personal statement, letters of recommendation together? You mentioned the DAT, which we'll talk about in a second. But mm -hmm. like, what was the timeline? Because a lot of people, uh, some people start as early as freshman. Mm -hmm sophomore year and some others start a little bit later junior or even senior year due to whatever due to mm -hmm. having to rearrange their their schedule uh their classes or possibly even due to the light bulb not going on going on until junior year right yeah. so just kind of share a little bit about that before we go into the dat so I started writing my personal statement and getting my letters of rec about in the fall um, before I was about to apply. The fall. Um, now, what now? What year was that? Was that your junior that was year? My, senior? That was technically my senior year. Right. But it was for a traditional student. It would be their junior year, I believe, or like at least two semesters before I graduated. Um, gotcha. Technically, it was senior year looking at the application. But I knew, already knew who I was going to ask for my letters of recommendation. And I actually got a committee letter, which personally I would, you know, advise students to do um, solely because I just thought it was somewhat of an easier process for me. Mm -hmm. Then I. So hold on I, one second. You mentioned a committee letter. What is a committee letter? Because that may be something, a strategy some people may want to explore. Explain a little bit about a committee letter and how to request it, ask for it. Gotcha. So a committee letter is like a pre-advisory for pre-dental and pre-medical students. It's like a council that they have or a committee at your institution where you select about three to four professors and you can have the option to have a medical professional include their letter in one like big packet of letters that your institution sends and they recommend you to all of the programs that you apply to. So I had all my professors just fill out a form, send all of their letters of recommendation to the committee, and the committee uploaded the committee letter to my application. So it wasn't, I was not trying to um, be on my professor's backs and say, hey, did you submit my, my, my recommendation letter yet? And all this other stuff, uh, because the individuals at the committee or on the committee were very proactive and they made sure everything was submitted on time. And that's a great way to approach it, uh, especially if you've got those pre-dental, pre-med advisors, uh, but more specifically, the pre-dental. There are a lot of students that do not, that we've, that have been on the, ep, uh, on the podcast and been on these episodes that have shared that that's been a challenge, right? Yeah. Not having those pre-dental or having pre-health advisors, but no mm -hmm. one knows about dental. Yeah, they, and they know about medical. They know about nursing. Maybe farm, farm, <laughs> but pre dental is a is a challenge. So you know, having that presence at your institution, or realizing that you don't have it, and maybe creating that presence through a a pre dental society where you can now create a group, not only of 
uh, aspiring dentists or students that want to apply to dental school, but also maybe picking and selecting one or two faculty members uh, that are medicine, have a medicine background that maybe understand a little bit about de dental school or a little bit about medical school. They can now be brought in to the society as an advisor or something, faculty advisor for the group, but also that now that makes it possibly could make it a little bit more easier for for the students to have a faculty connection that and a resource for those letters for these committee letters yeah very true 100 percent. you know i served as the president of my pre-donor society at towson university and i will honestly say that's the same message that i elucidate to every single student who's in the pre-med or pre-dental society and those who are on campus too because a lot of people are interested in dentistry they just don't know where to go they don't so, know. You know they don't know for us at these institutions that are, I would I would challenge everyone who's watching this video, who has the idea, you know, just give it a shot. Yeah. You know, sometimes it just takes some time and, you know, it takes a little bit of discipline. But, you know, at the end of the day, you'll be helping out numerous people and, you know, helping them reach their goals. And and again, guys that are watching and listen, this is why this content is, is valuable. This is why you got to watch this, listen to this and then implement the things that, uh, guests are sharing, student Dr. Malachi is sharing, things that I share, you got to implement it because this will help you along your journey probably a lot more than you think. So make sure that you share, you comment, but also listen and listen again and listen again mm -hmm. and, th and then implement and do it. Because That's exactly what I did. I can tell you that much. Yep. There you go. There you go. Hey, this is Dr. Darwin. Are you looking for some mentorship, some accountability, some help with getting all of this application and getting into dental school and getting into residency and then just your life as a new dentist. Look, I'm having monthly, twice a month, live coaching sessions and office hours so we can talk about all of that. I don't want you to struggle with the application process. I don't want you to struggle uh, with getting ready for interviews. I don't want you to struggle about what list of schools and programs to apply to. We talk about all of that in our group, our monthly group called Dr. Darwin On Demand. Dr. Darwin On Demand. Check it out down below here. And then also, if you're interested and you want to get that help so you don't have to struggle anymore so that you can get some mentorship, some accountability, and some help Hit this link right here. Hit that link right there so we can get you signed up and enrolled today. Today. Your future starts today. And I'm here to help you. This is Dr. Darwin. And join my members only community called Dr. Darwin On Demand. Look forward to seeing you soon, okay? Now back to this episode. Enjoy. So... We know part of the application is the the dreaded three-letter word, D-A-T, dental emissions test. And, uh, oh, man, I need a drink just thinking about me, how <laughs> I was preparing for it. I'm looking away like, woo, because it was, it was a lot to confront, especially as a non-traditional student myself. So share with us, let's talk a little bit about the D-A-T, because I know you had a pause, not only because of uh, some time that you had to take off because of uh, medical condition but also that paused your application mm -hmm. process. And it also paused your ability to prepare and take the DAT. So yeah. share with us, share with us a little bit about that process and what you did and what, what things you found successful as far as any prep courses uh, and the mm -hmm. time that you allocated to the process itself. Well, I would start off by saying, you know, that I kind of correlate the DAT to being like uh, the Intimidator 305 for my folks who go to Kings Dominion. Um, it's definitely a steep ride. Um, you know, in the winter before I apply, so before last cycle, around December, during my break, I was gun ho about, you know, studying. I was going to try to just study for five weeks and then take it. Um, but during that winter semester, I wasn't in the right headspace, and I would suggest anyone who's trying to take the DAT to not rush the process. Um, strive to only have to take that test once. 
because I personally wouldn't recommend trying to take it more than once. But if you have to take it more than once, then that's okay. Um, during that time, I took like a practice test, my first practice test, and I think I got like a 15. It was so bad. And I was like, it, gosh, this is going to be a journey for me because I, I don't know what's going on for this DAT. But, you know, after my surgery or before my surgery, when I was taking about 15 credits, I was also part time teaching. And I would wake up in the morning time at like four o'clock, um, head to my research center at Towson University at the Science Center, and I'll try to study for like two hours. I wouldn't suggest doing that. Um, I believe the best way to approach it was the way, not not the way that I did it, but that's one of the ways you can approach it. The way I studied for the DAT, um, I took about seven weeks in the summertime so after my classes were over and I was still in recovery, I basically all I could do was sit. So what I did was I just got DAT boot camp. Uh, shout out to my man, Ari. Uh, he's amazing. Um, I studied for about seven weeks, took every Sunday off. And I was also working during that time, working security. So I got a pretty sweet gig. I was able to get paid while I was also studying, like just we're using boot camp. I will honestly say for all my pre-dental students out there applying, don't rush the process. If you're not feeling ready to take the DAT, then I would say don't push it. For me, I feel I knew that I was ready after I took about five, five to six practice tests full length, and I was scoring where I wanted to score. Um, but I will honestly say DAT boot camp is really all you need. If you hold on to one program and use it to its fullest capacity then I'm quite sure you'll be able to do well and score in the realm that you want to. But I do think the most crucial aspect about the DAT is making sure you're in the right mental space. And when I say that, I mean, don't think of it as a task, but think of it as just another part of your journey. For me, I only got to take the DAT once. And, you know, looking back on my experience studying for the DAT, I really relish in the days where I was, you know, studying for it because every single dentist had to take the test. And on your route to become a dentist, you know, you get to say, hey, I sat down, I took the DAT, I got this score, I got that score. So, you know, just remembering to reminisce and enjoy the process was a big deal for me. Yeah, some great, some great tips about the DAT, especially the mental space. I, I want you to expand a little bit about the notion of being in the right mental space. Um, you yeah. did sh you did share the fact that when you first started studying, you were doing it piecemeal, uh, even though it was at the beginning of the day, but you had other things you were doing throughout the day. Oh, yeah. And you, and you made a pivot to full-time, seven weeks, se uh, six days a week for seven weeks and everything mm -hmm. else. But yeah. but to be at that, to make that determination and make that commitment, you've got to be in the right mental space. Please share mm -hmm. with us what that means, what what you're trying to communicate when you say that, because that could that could mean different things to, to different people. Yeah, I will honestly say to sum it up, it's remembering your reason why and using your reason why to motivate you every day for me. You know, after just getting out of the hospital, being in such deplorable conditions, I was longing for the things that I took for granted, like driving a car or, you know, actually sitting down and studying with my friends. So after that experience, I realized that, hey, you know, I'm privileged to be able to do this, you know, long, uh, not a long time ago, but, you know, my forefathers, they and my ancestors, they weren't they weren't able to sit down and study. So, you know, remembering my reason why and finding joy in the process yep. definitely helped me, um, you know, keep keep positive. And even when I got, you know, scores that I didn't want in on my practice test, I was still happy that I was still trying and I was still fighting and I was still improving. So, you know, taking the small wins, don't take those for granted, you know, hang them up on your wall and make sure that, you know, use that, use that to keep you in your right mental space. And, and you know, know that every day you're getting better. Yep. Know your why and and stay focused on, you know, what you're doing it and why you're doing it, right? 100%. And you're 100 doing 
Yeah. Yeah. And you're doing it because you need the DAT and you need other parts of your application so that you can get to the next phase, which is the interviews, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But prior to the interviews, you have to have a list of schools. You have to know why you pick those schools, whether it's proximity to where you're growing up or where you want to be in the next 10 years, whatever that is. Let's pivot now and talk a little bit about the schools. What? How many schools did you apply to and why did you pick those particular schools? So I ended up applying to around 10 schools or exactly 10 schools. I picked those particular schools because I knew I wanted to go to an institution that was community oriented and an institution that was not afraid to talk about how they're giving back. And, you know, while selecting my schools I wanted to apply to, I looked at the schools that invested a lot in me. I did a lot of, um, ah, gosh, what are they called? They're like programs where you're listening to different dental schools, like dentistry. Um, pre -dent, like pre-dent uh, impressions? Did you do some yeah, yeah, like impressions days. Yeah, yeah, impression days and stuff. And I went to a lot of those impression days and the institutions that were there that I saw pouring back into those individuals in the next generation coming up. Um, that was a characteristic that really stuck out to me. And of course, cost is, is extremely important. And, yep. you know, just the culture of the school. My biggest advice would be definitely to reach out to students who go to those institutions. Yeah, I was going to ask now, you if that was part. I know you go to these impression days, you get a chance to meet the students and yeah, if there were any time. other things that you did. Yeah, meeting a student is is actually that that can really sell you bottom line in addition to cost, of course. But uh, uh, meeting the students, especially students that look like you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a major deal. And for me, I will honestly say that that weighed heavily in deciding not only what school I'm going to attend, but also which institutions I apply to. Um, their experiences are just 100 percent authentic. And that's what you really need to hear um, from those students who are there. And I would highly, highly recommend that to anyone who's applying to dental school. Yeah, you got to you got to do your due diligence. You got to do some networking. Oh, yeah. Because um, that's going to help not only with the application and your decision, but not but but and it's going to help you with the next phase, which is the interviews. Uh, so let's talk about the number of interviews that you had based on the schools that you applied to and uh, any interesting questions that were asked at the interviews at the interviews. So I ended up interviewing at all 10 of the, well, not actually interview. I received interviews from all of the 10 schools I applied to um, before two interviews. I believe it was Nova and AT still. I denied the interviews uh, solely because of travel purposes um, and that goes back to having a virtual option for a lot of students, because I think, you know, it's nice to, to tour the schools in person. But if you have that virtual option, then it's inclusive to everybody. Nevertheless, I would say one of the I guess you could say. Well, funny well, well, before we go to the questions, just share, okay. share with us the, uh, the the schools that you got interviews at. So people have an idea of gotcha. everything. Yep. So you mentioned so received, Nova, AT Still. Yeah, Nova, AT Still, University of Maryland, um, University of Pennsylvania, Columbia University, um, UNE, so University of North uh, New England, uh, Midwestern, Howard, Meharry, and uh, Toro, New York Medical College. Which which uh, Midwestern? Because you know there's... <laughs> uh, Midwestern, Illinois. Illinois, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's one in Arizona too. So so Illinois, Howard, Meharry, and what was the last one? And uh Toro, New York Medical. Toro, College. Toro, yep. Yep. Familiar with with all of those. Okay. So you you were able to get interviews, receive interviews, invitations at all ten, which is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Thank phenomenal. You. And uh, you were going into the interview days and some of the questions. Yeah. And, you know, just receiving those interviews was really a shock to me because I didn't I didn't take my DAT until July 29th and my DAT scores weren't verified until like the 16th. So when I heard back, the first school I heard back from was Columbia, which was like 
August the 22nd, like the week after. I was incredibly shocked. But um, nevertheless, one of the the most interesting questions that I got at every single one of my interviews was a question about um, my score on the organic chemistry section of the DAT. Um, to my surprise, I was able to score a 30 in that section. And... <laughs> Come on, man. Did y'all hear that? Wait a minute. I don't think I don't think I don't think they heard that, man. I don't think. Let me let me let me pause. Now, for those of you that haven't taken the DAT or that have taken taken it, 30 in each there's a that's the top score. That's that's the top, bottom, whatever you want to call it. That's the top score in any section. Yeah. So basically you started off with a 30 and you kept your 30 after the <laughs> after the exam, right? Oh yeah, definitely. And it was funny because during the orgo section, I was like looking at certain questions and I was like, okay, I know for a fact I got that one wrong, but I was like, it's it's all good. I, I'm really comfortable with orgo. So um it's one of my favorite subjects. So but still it was a surprise because it looked nothing like my practice test scores. Right. Um but yeah, that, that was a question I got in every single one of my interviews was how I scored a 30 in the Orgo section. Now, honestly say, you, know, <laughs> you should have told him, you should have told him ancient African secret. Can I <laughs> not ancient Chinese secret? Ancient <laughs> ancient ancestral African uh 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 secret. Can't tell you, can't tell you. I'm hey, look, I'll tell you this much. <laughs> my interviews at Howard and Meharry, that's exactly what they got. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that was that was definitely a, a big question. And then it's also funny because in my general chemistry section, I actually scored a 17, which was crazy because they're like, okay, how does this dude score a 30 in Orgo, but a 17 in, in Gen Chem? And I told every single one of them, I said, you know, I actually spent more time studying the Gen Chem than I did the Orgo because I knew Gen Chem was going to be pretty tough for me. Mm -hmm. Um Nevertheless, it was a great conversation. Um, it's one of the things where you have to feel comfortable talking about. Um, yep. You lose some, you lose some, but it's okay. Um, also, you know, my community service, uh, teaching experience, um, my media interviews, like news interviews and stuff that I have, and the scholarship that my brother and I host for uh, individuals in our community were all aspects of my application that they really come through when they ask me a lot of questions about. So, you know, definitely know your application front and back and, you know, be authentic and genuine with your responses because they'll be able to tell if you're just putting something on there because you want to look good or if you're doing something because you actually care. Yep. Got to know your application back and forth, forth and back. That's great. That's great. So you had your interviews. I know you went to eight of the of the 10, as you stated, just to make sure that you um were mindful of the cost and the travel and the other options as far as virtual or in person so then you get <laughs> then december comes at least the first wave of 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 notification comes in december mm -hmm. and you start getting some communication oh yes you start getting some uh acceptances Mm -hmm. uh and 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 then you have to kind of go through this process of all right got accepted one okay got accepted two mm -hmm. four five six seven eight okay this is great awesome but how am i going to decide which school i'm going to go to <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. let's talk about that process that was an incredibly difficult process you know um, and before I, I move on to that, I want to give a shout out to my 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 guys from We Believe Dentistry. Um, they're actually yeah. helping uh, to pay for my DAT stuff. So if you have Instagram, uh, definitely, definitely yeah. let them know or reach out yeah. to them because yeah, they're giving out they're giving out some money. Yep, shout out um, to the to the brothers up up at Tufts who created this uh, created that uh, opportunity and scholarship. Uh, again, it's right up here. For those that are watching, I'll, it's also down in the description. Yeah. So um, when when I was actually on acceptance day, I, I'm a teacher. So I was on my way to the school and I told my students, I said, hey, you know, remember how I was telling you about how Mr. Wright is going to be 
trying to get some acceptances today. So when you hear my phone ring, you know, we all have to be silent. And I teach seventh and eighth graders. So, you know, they're a little rambunctious, rambunctious at time. Um, but I actually got the call from um, UPenn and from Columbia, from University of Maryland, all that stuff while I was in the classroom. And I was really happy that my students were able to, you know, hear those conversations. Um, nevertheless, when I was considering what institution I wanted to go to, a couple of things definitely played a big presence in making that decision. Number one being my involvement and commitment to my community. Um, being a firm believer in that, you know, everything that I can do, I can do it from home if I wanted to. And, you know, with the works that my brother and I are doing right now in the community of Baltimore and the DMV area, I wanted to make sure that I was still present to continue those um, avenues and, and that work. Um, so that kind of led my decision to attending the University of Maryland School of Dentistry. Um, yeah! Congratulations! Congratulations! That's the reveal, y'all. That's the reveal. <laughs> going to, going to stay in the area. Yes, sir. And... And, and make Baltimore even better. Yes, sir. That's great, That's, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, UMB has definitely been a great school to me. I've attended numerous Dentistry Today programs and, you know, just engaging with their faculty and staff and, you know, being present, present in the schools and in that area is something that is really crucial to me. Um, also, my girlfriend of about six years now got into the physical therapy program there. So we're going to be heading to these professional schools together and, you know, just repping it out like we continuously do. So that was also a factor in weighing into my decision. That's great, man. Yeah, that community base, base uh, piece is very important. Uh, I can tell you from past experience of, of when I was at University of Maryland as well, that the Student National Dental Association, the SNDA, mm. uh, has always been a contributing factor within the community uh, and also uh, lending its support of other organizations that are community focused as well. So brother, you are in the right place for that. And that's going to be great. That's uh, going to be great class of uh, what is that class of 2027? Yes, sir. My man, my man. That's so great, man. That's so great. <laughs> so I know, the success, the acceptances, to have it done is 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 great. But I also know <laughs> that there's been some parts of the process that ain't been so great. Yeah. <laughs> so share with us a little bit uh about the the you know what's been the hardest part about this entire process uh for you. You know, I would definitely say that the hardest part is, you know, remaining disciplined and consistent throughout the four years, five years, however long uh, you're on this journey for, you know, getting into dentistry and applying to having the gall to even apply to, to dental school uh, takes commitment and consistency and discipline. And, you know, the day in and day out studying, but also remembering to enjoy the journey was something that was definitely difficult. Um, not every day is going to be a great day. You're not going to score well on every exam that you take. But if you realize that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm in the thick of it now and I, I really want to get to this certain point and I'm going to make every single day count and you enjoy the journey and the process, I will make it worth it. But I will say that the hardest part was definitely staying consistent, staying disciplined and, you know, just every single day trying your best to get to where you want to be while also enjoying the process. Um, in addition to that, I think composing and cultivating a very thorough and complete application um, that perfectly elucidates your experience and your true personality is something that is extremely important, not only for you know success during your application cycle, but also to um, kind of make the burden a little lesson on yourself. Um, starting early, Logging into the ASDAS website, looking at all the different sections of the application and making sure that you, you know, copy and paste a lot of that stuff into a Google Doc, fill yeah. it out throughout the year. And, yep. you know, so that way, when you get ready to apply, you can just copy and paste it over. You know, I'm, I'm really glad that I did that, especially with my surgery, because, you know, there's no way I would have been able to get all that stuff done if I hadn't prepared, prepared uh, prior to. 
And that's and that's a great segue, man, to some some tips, knowing what you know now and some things that really helped you. Uh, you know, what are some tips and strategies that you would give and share with pre-dental students? I know you mentioned the part about starting early, right? Mm-hmm. And some and some people will get a get a little antsy about that. Well, what does that mean? Starting early, like how early should I start? Uh, yeah, yeah, you and know. Think, so go ahead. I really think the funny thing is that a lot of people misconstrue the idea of starting early and finishing early. When you start early, you're not trying to rush, <laughs> right? <laughs> to right. Finish everything, you know. You just want to make sure you have a great outline, and as you're doing things, you're adding to what you already started, not looking to necessarily finish as soon as possible. Right. You know, for me, when I heard people, you know, say things like, you know, start early, you know, start studying for the DAT early, like start taking your dad early and all this stuff. Like I, you know, was thinking, I was thinking that's the only way you can do it. But, you know, honestly, looking back at my situation, you know, it's good to start in a timely manner, but not to rush the process because you're trying to make me a timeline that, you know, society has set for you. You know, definitely be cognizant of making the best decisions for yourself and knowing your application, but definitely know yourself enough to say, hey, you know, I might need to spend some more time on this. So let me not rush this. Let me, you know, be efficient and be effective and be disciplined. But let's not rush the process and try to finish early um, and finish as soon as you start. So and that's a good point. Uh, That's a good point. You know, you have to decide, make decisions based off of you. Not what everybody else is doing or what everybody else is saying. Because that's everybody else. That ain't you. It's not you. That ain't you. Right. So, yes, you can take that in and make an observation of what others typically do. But you also now have to decide based on where you at Mm -hmm. and your assessment of of the situation. Not go in panic mode and say, oh, I got to get all this done. I got to get all this done. Yeah, you got to get it done. But you also have to be cognizant uh, of the fact that somebody else's pace over there And what they're doing and how they're doing it is not your pace. Exactly. And I think as soon as you realize that, you'll be able to maximize your fullest potential. Because, you know, when I realized that I, you know, you don't really care about what anyone else is doing. You you listen and you learn to everybody, everyone you encounter, especially those who have already been on this journey. But you tailor their experiences to your own story there and you, you take their advice and you make sure that you come up with your own script. Yep. Yeah, you got to audit, audit yeah. the advice that you get, even the, the advice that you get that you guys are listening to right now. You have to audit the advice and these tips to fit your circumstance. 100 percent, 100 percent. Starting early, you know, we, we mentioned about starting early with the DAT, mm-hmm. but, you know, you couldn't necessarily start early just due to some circumstances that yeah. will, which will come up. And you won't even know you won't. when they're going to come up. They just come up. It's called life, y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. what life That's what life does best. Just comes up <laughs> when you don't expect it, when you don't realize it, uh, when you don't want it to. Mm-hmm. Right? But also mm-hmm. sometimes what happens is life gives you a lesson, uh, well, teach you a lesson that you appreciate afterwards. 100%. 100%. And, you know, the the best thing about life is that we can control how we react to it. And, you know, when you control how you react to it, you can literally lay out whatever foundation and destination you have for yourself. And, you know, you can make it make it yours. You know, I would my mentor told me one time, you know, one of the one of the greatest pieces of advice he gave me was, you know, be eat greedy. Don't don't eat passively don't eat sparingly you know whatever you want that's out here go get it by not but not necessarily by any means but go get it with a purpose and a passion for it if you buckle down and you really make up in your mind like hey i'm gonna make this happen one way or another then it's gonna happen for you i that's almost a guarantee unless you know god has other plans for you yeah go get your goal with greed be greedy about getting your goal you have to 
I like that. Greed. Be greedy, and when you're trying to get your goal, you got to do it. You have to, and it's your goal. It's not somebody else's goal. It's got to be your goal and your mindset. It's got to be. That's my goal. It's my mm -hmm. responsibility, my duty, my obligation to get this goal done. Um, let's go. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> you know, I would be remiss if I didn't mention a quote that my father says all the time. You know, he's been so influential in my life. You know, my brother and I call him the great prophet. Um, and one of the things he says all the time is, you know, be great now. That's a slogan that he lives by, the slogan that he's uh, implementing in our lives on a daily basis. You don't have to wait to be great. You could be great in this very moment, this very day. Well, I'll tell you, man, we, we're greatly appreciative of all these gems, <laughs> uh, sure. diamonds, and, and, and all the tips you've been sharing about your journey. It's been a, it's been a, it's a remarkable journey. And I, and I know there's probably even more that we haven't even touched on. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but what is a way for people to get in contact with you if they have any more questions or just want to ask you about uh, this process? The best way to get in contact with me would definitely be through Instagram. Um, my Instagram name is Malachi Wright underscore. So that's M-A-L-A-C-H-I-W-R-I-G-H-T underscore. Um, or through email, that's malachi.e.write at gmail.com. Um, again, if you reach out to me, I'll, I'll for sure uh, hit you back up and, you know, we can have a great conversation. Yeah, yeah. And also hit us up with the the family uh, foundation thing that you and your brother have as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, my brother and I, we uh, started scholarships called um, the Wright Brother Endowment Scholarship. Um, all the links that you really need to, you know, donate is in my bio or his bio on Instagram. Um, right now we're working on getting things a little more established, getting a website up. Um, and we're accepting donations uh, through Cash App. And uh, we're working on starting a GoFundMe for that as well. So um, go to my Instagram page, uh, look for any type of updates that uh, we have for the scholarship on there. And, you know, any donation will be much appreciated. There you go, guys how to get into dental school one perspective one journey one journey that has resulted in eight acceptances and one school where he's going to make the impact because that's what he does yes, student sir. dr malachi hey brother thanks so much so happy for you so so proud of you uh welcome to the university of maryland dental school family brother <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on here. And, and we're excited, man. And no, thank you very much for sharing your story. Uh, guys, check out these stories here. Hopefully these will be helpful for you as well. That's our time. Go to the next video right now. Go. Go, go to the next video. Love, peace, and smile. Go to the next video. Go. Right now. Right now. Click. Click. Right now.